my ambition is to go live on the Antique Roadshow and say to some old woman, you know that's worth? Fuck all. <laughs> hey, not a fucking carrot. Do you know you wouldn't know this, but Bernard Manning, the big fat get. Do you know when he was, you know when he was born, the midwife had to have gas. <laughs> I'm telling you. Hey, there's a rumour going around Moss Side that Enoch Powell had died. And he went to the pearly gates and he clogged that gate. And after ten minutes a voice said, who dat? <laughs> he said, forget it. <laughs> no, there's three blokes in the bar and they're talking and one said, he said, what's the quickest thing in the world? The other two said, that's a bit deep, what do you mean? He said, what's the quickest thing in the world? He said, funny you should say that. He said, I suppose the quickest thing in the world, it's got to be electricity, hasn't it? The other two said, electricity? How'd you make that out? He said, well, you touch a light switch and the light comes on instantaneous. And the second one said, no, I disagree with you there. He said, I think the quickest thing in the world has got to be talking. The other two said, how'd you make that out? He said, well, you talk, you open your mouth and people hear you straight off. So the third guy stood, he said, no, I disagree with the two. He was at eight pints of Guinness. He said, uh, I disagree with you there. He said, I think the quickest thing in the world has got to be diarrhea. <laughs> and the other two said, diarrhea? How'd you make that out? He said, well, last week I had diarrhea and before I could switch a light on or tell anybody, I'd shake myself. <laughs> This story's for the girls, not the fellas. The fellas go. But the girls are like this. True story, couple been married 30 years. And he goes out one afternoon on his own, walks in a shoe shop, cops for a pair of patent leather shoes, loves them, leaves them on in the shop. Goes home, his wife's there knitting. And he's walking up and down like that in front of her. And she didn't notice the shoes. So he strips off, start naked, nothing on but the shoes. Stood there in front of her like the FA Cup. <laughs> she said, what are you doing, you dirty, filthy, disgusting man, standing there, middle of the afternoon, no clothes on, that thing, <laughs> hanging down between your legs, what's it doing? He said, it's pointing at my new shoes. <laughs> She said, well, next time, do us both a favour and buy a new app. <laughs> Two women in maternity hospital, one was very posh, and the other one was normal. This posh woman said, when I had my first child, my husband bought me a block of flats. This woman said, very nice, very nice. She said, I had my second child, my husband bought me a yacht. This woman said, very nice, very nice. She said, when you had your first child, did your husband buy you anything? She said, well, actually, he bought me some elocution lessons. She said, they obviously haven't worked. She said, well, actually, they have, because I used to say, piss off, but now I say, very nice. <laughs> the wife's mother said, go, if you're in the Arndale Centre, go and get me the Holy Bible. I'm going to Midnight Mass. Family of Catholics. Oh, they had W. H. Smiths. There's a black kid behind the counter. I said, Holy Bible, please. He said, 395, monkey. <laughs> I said, I love it. He said, you want it wrapping? I said, yes, please. He said, ah, oh, fodder, what in hell? <laughs> Artist fella walked into a pub. He had a lot of dog shit on his hand. He said, look what I nearly studied. <laughs> Everybody tells Irish jokes, have you noticed? Like the one about the little Irish fella in Piccadilly in London, and one of those ladies came up to him. Those ladies of horizontal refreshment. <laughs> she said, would you like to sleep with me for a hundred pounds? He said, I'm not very tired at the moment, but I could use the money. <laughs> And I went off to Hong Kong, I've been very fortunate, went off to Hong Kong. 
And I was I went off, I'll tell you what, I went off with a girl in Hong Kong, a little Chinese girl called Blender. <laughs> and uh, I was lying in bed with her one night, you know when you get a bit fruity, you know when you get a bit fruity? I said, you fancy 69 tonight, Blender? She said, you think I get up and cook at this time of night? <laughs> To the Coif Man in Manchester, around Piccadilly, George Street, the Coif, one of the best Chinese restaurants. I had chicken fried rice and some spare ribs, sweet and sour pork. I hey, know I had some prawns, balls, and batter. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I mean, prawns were big, aren't they? I thought, I thought, no wonder they're walking across the sea, but their eyes popping out. <laughs> <laughs> I said to the waiter, said, Come to so many Chinese in Great Britain. He said, because they're very, very nice place. I said, Great Britain's a fine place. He says, why aren't you back in Hong Kong? He said, there are too many people. I said, you're all over there making chips. I said, what about China? He said, it's full of communists. I said, you can't vote like we can in Great Britain. I said, how often in China, tell me, how often in China do you have an election? He said, every morning we go <laughs> <laughs> one bloke was one bloke died you know and his wife was trying to get in touch with him she loved him so much she wondered what the hell she got a media you know these mediums is it and they got around the table they're trying to get in touch with her husband and he got in touch you know is that you albert he said yes love he said what are you doing now albert he says always oh, i mean enjoying myself now love he said and this life is wonderful i fly all over the place she said, you never flew when you were married to me. You wouldn't go to bloody Mallorca. You always ended up in bloody Blackpool. He said, Dad, I go swimming every day now as well. She said, swimming and bloody flying. She said, you never went near the sea when you were alive. He said, I'm making love to everything now. Do you love life? She said, is it good? He said, I have a beard every night. She said, you weren't like that when you got married to me, she says. He said, I wasn't a bleeding duck, was I? <laughs> It's like the bloke in hospital, you know. You only had six hours to live. He said, what am I going to do, doctor? He said, go home and tell your wife. He went home and his wife got the shock of her life. She said, how about you look his wife? She said, sheep, what's the doctor say? He said, I've only got six hours to live. She said, it's six o'clock now. She said, you know, you've been a wonderful husband. Is there anything I can do to make your last few hours comfy? He said, well, come to bed with me, he said. And let me put my arms around you and let me love you like I used to. And they went to bed, and this couple made love from six o'clock till nine o'clock, this dirty little scrubby little <laughs> And at nine o'clock, she said, Albert, she said, you've only got three hours left. Is there anything else I can do for you? For God's sake, tell me. He said, could I have a brandy? She said, I'll go and get you the biggest bloody brandy you've ever had, she said. And that cigar you brought back from Torremolinas. <laughs> and he's laying in bed, sipping the brandy, puffing away at the cigar till ten o'clock, she said, Albert. Do you know you've only got two hours left? Is there anything else I can do if you forgot to tell me? He said, get back into bed again. And he give it, he, he, made, he made love to us at 11 o'clock. <laughs> Bloody sex maniac. <laughs> 11 o'clock, she said, Albert, you've only got one hour left. Is there anything else I can do if you forgot to tell me? He said, get back into bed. She said, I'm going for Christ's sake, Albert. She said, I've got to get up in the morning, you haven't. <laughs> That's women for you. Anyway, they're not, they're not recording this anyway. Three shirts, this is one of Bernie's favourites. You'll go mad about this now. You when he comes up. I'm going to piss her. I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> Three surgeons, Russian surgeon, American surgeon, and one from Ancoats in Manchester. And the Russian said, what we did in Russia, we transplanted the heart into a millionaire in Russia, and he's doing very well. And the American said, listen, Mac in America, we transplanted a kidney and a heart into a millionaire in America, and he's doing very well. Lad from Manchester, what we did in Manchester? <laughs> Royal Infirmary. <laughs> we transplanted a pair of boobs on a fellow's back. <laughs> and the American said, boobs on a guy's back in Manchester? Was he a millionaire? He said, he will have his ass last out. <laughs> Thank you.
Listen, I hope, I hope it's a, I, well, it's going to be a huge success tonight, isn't it? I'm sure you, you kind people have come here and I think it's brilliant to help Johnny Amp and the, and the Society for the Blind. I think it's bloody fantastic. And the blind people love taking the mickey, you know. I mean, one bloke was telling me, there's two scousers in a pub, one said, what are you doing? He said, I'm taking a load of blind people down to Blackpool. And he says, uh, he said, I don't fancy that. He's the smashing people, they play football on the beach. He said, how do you play football? He's blind people. Do you have a ball with a bell in? <laughs> it's true, this. So they took them down the beach, put them on, and about half an hour later, the bloke comes in the pub, he said, who's looking after these blind people who play football on the beach? This fella said, I am. He said, well, you get out there, they're kicking me bleeding donkey to death, eh? <laughs> Oh, there's, a, there's a two Welsh girls talking, right? And one said, she said, uh, she said, Bloodwin, Bloodwin, she said, how'd you get on with that Gareth Jones the other night? And the other one, she said, Gareth Jones, what a nice man you... Now, <laughs> now, I've something to tell you about my Welsh accent. <laughs> I haven't quite mastered it. <laughs> but I'll try it again. She said, uh, she said, Bloodwin, that's all right. She said, Bloodwin, she said, how do you get on with that Gareth Jones the other night? The other one, she said, Gareth Jones, what a night... No, I can't do it, just did it. What a shame. <laughs> what a shame. And I'm all right with all the other accents, like the bloke is, is the digging a hole in the road, this Gaelic gentleman. He's using one of these new Irish motorbikes. Have you seen him? <laughs> like that. And the foreman said to him, what are you digging that hole there for? He said, well, sir. Well, so you see you're digging a hole over here, sir. Well, you're not going to have enough room to put all your dirt back in because you never do, sir. So I'm digging a hole here <laughs> for you to put your spare dirt in. The foreman said, but you'll have some dirt left over from this hole. He said, oh, no, I'm not, sir, because I'm making this one bigger than that one. <laughs> <laughs> she said, Bloodwin, how'd you get... She said, Gareth Jones, what did... <laughs> He's walking through the outback in Australia. <laughs> He's walking through the outback in Australia and he saw a chap with a lot of sheep. He said, you've got a lot of sheep here. The man said, yes, I have. He said, if I can tell you how many sheep you've got, can I have one? He said, yes. He said, you've got 387. He said, I have. Correct. Take a sheep. As he's going away, he said, if I can tell you where you come from, can I have my sheep back? He said, yes. He said, you're from Dublin. He said, I am. How on earth did you know that? He said, never mind, I know. Put my dog down and clear off. <laughs> <laughs> she said, <laughs> there's a phone call, two o'clock, and then I'll tell you about the two Welsh girls. There's a phone call, two o'clock in the morning, the man answered the phone, he said, hello? I'm just wondering why his phone's so low down. She said, <laughs> she said, hello? She said, uh, he said, hello, excuse me, he said, are you the local, are you the local vet, are you the vet? The man said, yes, it's two in the morning. He said, yes, I know, he said, I've got a bit of a problem. He said, what's the problem? He said, well, I've got two dogs and they're stuck in my garden. So... <laughs> So the vet said, so we'll get a shovel and dig them out. He said, no, he said, they're not stuck like that, you fool. He said, the uh, proper dogs, these, and they're uh, st stuck in my garden. What can I do? He said, we'll throw a bucket of cold water over them. He said, I've done that. He said, has it separated them? He said, no, he said, they're still uh, st stuck. What can I do? He said, have you got an extension to your telephone? He said, yes. He said, well, take your extension to your telephone out, put it next to the dogs, and get somebody to ring you. He said, will that separate them? He said, it just did me. <laughs> She said, she said, Bloodwin, I'll do this if he kills me. She said, she said, Bloodwin, how'd you, get, <clears throat> how'd you get on with that Gareth Jones the other night? And she said, Gareth Jones, what? <laughs> Have we got any Welsh in? Have we got any Welsh? Hoggy. Hoggy, Hoggy, Hoggy. Easy to entertain, the Welsh. <laughs> She said, how'd you get on with that? She said, Gareth Jones, what a nice man he was. <laughs> That'll have to do. She said, what a nice man he was. Isn't that one-way system in Manchester nice now, isn't it? I've been driving around five hours today. I bumped into Glenn Miller twice. <laughs> she said, what a nice man he was. She said, do you know he took me out to the pictures? She said, I've got it. She said, do you know he, he took me out to the pictures? 
She said, did he? She said, yes. She said, what happened? Then she said, well, he bought me a big bag of popper. Don't know he didn't buy that. <laughs> She said he he bought me. <laughs> hoping hoping has a bloody laugh. <laughs> I just found out why Scotsmen always wear kilts, so the sheep can't hear the zips. <laughs> she said, Gar <laughs> She said, Gareth Joe. My missus has bought me some of them boxer shorts. I think they won the first round. <laughs> They're what I call my Indian underpants. They keep creeping up behind. <laughs> she said, do you know he bought me a big bag of sweeties? She said, did he? She said, yes. She said, what happened then? She said, well, we went inside the pictures. We sat on the back row of the pictures while he put his arms around my neck. Well, I laughed. All time I'm laughing. <laughs> she said, what happened then? She said, well, he put his hands up on my knee while I laughed. <laughs> she said, what happened then? She said, well, he, he tried to put his hands inside my blouse. Well, I laughed. <laughs> she said, why are you laughing? She said, sweeties are in my pocket all the time. <laughs> Good evening, my flowers. <laughs> and welcome to my country. <laughs> By gum. I must have been brought here to add a bit of colour to it, show. Sure. <laughs> There's no darkies in, is there? If there is, I'll give some clog. <laughs> Smile if you're in. <laughs> oh, my little cousin's there. Are you all right, son? <laughs> Ah, uh, there's a full tribe. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, hey, hey, hold on a minute, hold on. Let's get job right. I went to London a fortnight's in, that's two weeks to you. London, I was at the Park Lane Hotel in London, very big hotel. And I was in the function room there and I was introduced on stage and 650 people rose en bloc as I walked out on the stage. They thought it was Nelson Mandela. <laughs> By gum, it's an awful place that London, isn't it? Awful place, I'm not very keen on it. Some mucky women there. <laughs> but looking round now at people's face, is that in colour? <laughs> if it's in black and white, you've got a negative there, son. <laughs> Little Pakistani went home voluntary. Nobody sent him, they wished him, but they didn't send him. And he arrived in Pakistan and his father's waiting at the airport to greet him and as he stepped up the plane, his father ran across the tarmac, he said, Welcome, 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 oh my son. <laughs> well, that me? <laughs> I've collected the rents that long, I'm talking like him. He said, and how is wonderful England? He said, Father, wonderful country indeed. Now, we know that without him telling his dad. He said, well, how is religion in England, my son? He said, Father, wonderful religions. He said, religions? How many is there? Well, he said, Father, there is three. He said, three? There was only two when I was there. Of course, they've all been, you know that, don't you? <laughs> he said, tell me, my son, what is the three religions? He said, well, Father, they have Church of England, Roman Catholic, and Bingo. <laughs> He said, bingo, what is this religion's bingo? Well, he said, Father, I will explain. Everybody troop into big hall, buy a card, sit down. Gentlemen stand on stage and shout numbers, 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 and everybody, mark their card, mark their card, mark their card. <laughs> said, and all of a sudden, someone shout, bingo. And everybody else said, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Thank you.
You have got to have a laugh, haven't you? That's what life's all about. That's what life's all about. I, mean, I was in Blackpool. I was in Blackpool a fortnight ago. I like that place. Going to make that our capital. <laughs> and there were two dogs opposite tower trying to cross the road, you know, two dogs. They were big ones, they were big dogs. And, they and every time they stepped off the pavement, a taxi came by, or a bread van, or a tram. Then all of a sudden, a tandem came flashing by them, a man and a woman pedalling like hell. And one dog looked at the other, he said, hey, up. He said, what's the matter? He said, when we went home like that last year, they chucked a bucket of water over us. <laughs> My mum tell me that one. <laughs> Man, you meet some queer people, you know, you meet some funny folk on your travels. Is there any Scots in the audience this evening? No Scots? Did you notice, ladies and gentlemen, I said, is there any Scots in the audience, not Scotch? Scott is a person, Scotch is a drink. Now then, what a wonderful education this boy's had. <laughs> the missionaries did a good job on us. <laughs> and then we ate them. <laughs> not going to do any American jokes. I'm from Blackpool, by the way. I'm not gay. <laughs> Got to say that. You get a lot of puffs in Blackpool. Two of them mugged a woman last week. One held her down. The other one did her hair. Not me, I'm married. Been married seven years, got the seven year itch. At least that's what I hope it is. <laughs> Wife ruined the stag night, she was in the film. <laughs> got a lot of visitors to Blackpool, we get the Scousers. Any Scousers in? Leave, leave the red one on the car park, will you? I parked my car there a few weeks ago. Kid came up to me, he said, hey mister. I said, what? He said, mind your car for the fiver. I said, you're all right son, I've got a Rottweiler on the back seat. He said, can I put fires out? <laughs> and you can't mention Liverpool without mentioning the greatest escape artist of all time, Ken Houdini Dodd. <laughs> whose solicitor is now in America trying to get Stevie Wonder his driving license back. <laughs> Have we got the Americans in Blackpool? Yanks. Any Yanks in? Yanks, I said. <laughs> Big and it swines, them Yanks. One of them's in Blackpool in the back of a promenade going down, going down in a taxi. He said to the taxi driver, hey boy, he said, what? He said, I think Blackpool's the asshole of the world. Y'all. He said, what are you doing? Just passing through. <laughs> he said, what's that down there, boy? He said, that's South Pier, that Blackpool. He said, how long did it take you to build that? He said, it took about three years. He said, back home in the States, we build that in three weeks. Y'all. He thought, you creep. Carry on down the prom, they got some Madame Two Swords. He said, what's that there? He said, it's Madame Two Swords, Waxworks. He said, how long did it take you to build that? He said, about 18 months. He said, back home in the States, we build that in 18 days. Y'all. He thought, you creep. <laughs> Carry on down the prom, they got to the tower, Blackpool Tower. He said, what's that there, boy? He said, I don't know, it wasn't there this morning. <laughs> And I won't do Irish gags, there's Irish comedians coming on, great Irish comedians, in fact the best Irish comedians ever are going to be walking on this stage, so I won't do Irish gags, and I don't do them anyway because I've been over there. Worked in Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland. Those who have been over there will agree with me, the Irish people are fantastic. Minority cause the problem, most of them are great. There's plenty of other countries in the world to have a go at, but I'm going to go at the Irish. Take Holland. <laughs> Pies are crap. <laughs> Two Dutch fellas walked in a pub, Paddy and Murphy. <laughs> oh. 
another Dutch fella, Seamus, came over. He said, Murphy, he said, what do you want, Seamus? He said, what's got four legs and stinks? He said, I give up. He said, you and him. He said, that's a cracker. He said, I'll try that on Sean when he gets back from Amsterdam. Sean's walked in with his pal, Paddy and Murphy walked over. He said, hey, Sean. He said, what do you want, Murphy? He said, what's got four legs and stinks? He said, I don't know. He said, me and him. <laughs> I was waiting on a bus in Blackpool as a Dutch fella stood next to me. Bus arrives, one man bus. He said, I've never been on one of these before. What do you do? I said, just do what I do. I got on the bus, I said, Stanley Park, single. He got on, he said, Paddy Murphy, married, good luck. <laughs> He's got on the bus, as a woman sat opposite him, about 30 years old, well stacked, summer dress on. Two little lads sat next to her, she didn't know. She dropped a purse on the floor, bent down to pick it up, and her boobs popped out. Sat back up, she didn't notice. Hot day. <laughs> Bus carries on, cobbles. <laughs> Two little lads laughing their heads off. <laughs> Wobbly! So the Dutch fella thought for a minute, he thought, I've got to be discreet here. <laughs> he said, Mrs. She said, yes. He said, the K-I-D-S can see your tits. <laughs> Last one, I don't like hammering the Dutch. <laughs> He's chatting a bird up in a bar. He said, I think you're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life. She said, you're wasting your time chatting me up. He said, why would that be? She said, I'm a lesbian. He said, what's a lesbian? She said, well, you see that girl behind the bar with a blonde hair? He said, yes. She said, I'd like to take her home, rip all her clothes off, and make mad passionate love to her. Jesus Christ, he said, I must be a lesbian as well. <laughs> Everybody says things change as you grow older. I don't know. I like to reflect back about violence and what have you. Violence, everybody says it's very violent today. You pick up a newspaper, violence. What's the news, violence? What's the sport, violence? And everybody says, it wasn't like that when we were young. Where were they brought up on the moon? <laughs> if I didn't get a good kick in a couple of times a week, you used to think nobody liked me. I was beaten up going to school by the Protestants and coming back by the Catholics. <laughs> the Jews got me on Saturdays. <laughs> the most violent person I ever met was my own dad. Some of the things he used to say. I'm gonna knock your brains in. I'll put that smile on the other side of your face. I thought he was a plastic surgeon. <laughs> Sometimes he used to tell me how far he was going to hit me. <laughs> Where's kingdom come? <laughs> or the middle of next week? <laughs> I was going there every night. Just for being late. My father waited up for you behind the door, whistling. <whistles> he was a sheriff, I was bad. I used to hide round the bottom of the street. Please God, let him be in bed, I'll never do it again. The lights used to go out at 12 o'clock. You made that lonely walk up that lonely street. Every noise multiplied a hundred times. That was you and your stocking feet. <laughs> Took your key out, stuck it in your ear, get a little wax on it. Stick it in the door. <laughs> Should have waxed the hinges. <laughs> Couldn't get them in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> Please God, let him be in bed. There he was, lurking in the shadows. <laughs> Come in, stupid. I went because I was stupid. <laughs> Fathers always had their jokes, didn't they? He'd come out with one of his. 
Go and get me something to hit you with. <laughs> I went because I was stupid. <laughs> Brought him back a balloon. <laughs> we lived in a small house in a small street. My father had bad blood pressure. He didn't want to get excited, he didn't want to wake the neighbours up. So he used to hit us on the head with a slipper. Every word he spoke, he struck. Went like this. How many times have I told you to be in this house at eleven more at night? Hey, 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 hey. Blood pressure took over. Forgot who he was. Do you know who I am? And he forgot who I was. <laughs> who do you think you are? <laughs> then my mother joined in. It's for your own good, son. <laughs> do you remember us going to school? Like in Balakalav, and I had. <laughs> oh, lad, at the front where my dinner had got on it. We're not deformed, innit? <laughs> the way our mothers used to send us to school to keep us warm. She used to put a pin through your underpants and your balakalava like that. <laughs> then she'd wrap a scarf round your neck, pull it round you, another bloody big pin at the back. <laughs> and that was in August. She needed a pair of mittens. Remember the mittens with the big thumbs in? <laughs> I saw you wouldn't lose them. She put a bit of elastic up your hand. You? <laughs> you used to walk along the street like the six million dollar man. <laughs> then someone in the playground would pull your glove off. <laughs> One kid in the class, wasn't he? His mother used to buy him a leather helmet. Do you remember the leather helmet? <laughs> you have a button on the top, didn't it? <laughs> Big ears and a buckle on the rail. <laughs> when it rained, it was like bricks hitting them on the head. <laughs> I can still see that kid now, can you? Hey. He used to wear national health glasses, didn't he? <laughs> With an elastoplast over one eye. <laughs> and in the summer in the playground, when it was sunny, he used to take his glasses off and be in the back of the hand, give us your dinner money. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's a good job didn't remember, isn't it? Hey. Uh, what about you girls? You never had all the kids, do you? Girls, come on. You're getting all your kids Carly Monogony gear, aren't you? You never had them when you were kids, did you, mums? No. Jim slips. Do you remember the gym slips? We can hem on it was that long, so it fitted all the family. <laughs> and the navy blue knickers that the mots have been at. Do you remember that? You used to have a little pocket for your dinner money, didn't you? When those lads used to feel your legs, you think we're after your dinner money. You get off! <laughs> oh dear. It's bloody funny, isn't it? Hey. But you, I mean, the kids these days, you get everything, don't they? Scale Electric, Christmas comes. What do you buy them? Scale Electric, Operation Tossy Over Dolls, Connect Four, Simon Says, Computers. Hey. You didn't have them, did you, mums? No, oh, you were quite happy in the playground with a couple of balls in your hand, weren't you? <laughs> You used to get up against the wall with the balls. You used to put your gym slip up your knickers so it wouldn't flap about. Onesie, opposite, twosie, threesie, fours. Twosie, three, fours, and onesie, twosie, three, fours. Twosie, three, fours. 
Weren't you? Hey, come on, girls, you were good. Couldn't do it now, could you? You can't get your friggin' leg over now, can you? <laughs> you used to come home at four o'clock, you'd have a glass of water, a piece of bread, and you'd be out again, would you? Because you never got looked after, did you? Not like the kids get looked after today. Your mum used to say, Get out, don't come back until it's dark. Now, fuck it off. <laughs> used to get a rope out this shed. Remember that bloody big rope? Tied to the lamppost. Friggin' big wagon rope. About two inches thick. <laughs> Sparks off the concrete. <laughs> Do you know what we used to play in Liverpool? A good one. Forwards, backwards, sideways. Have you ever played that? Forwards, backwards, sideways. I'm sure I have to play it. All the lads stood in a circle. One lad stands in the middle. And you hit him on the head with a shovel. <laughs> And you've got to guess which way he's going to fall. <laughs> in Liverpool, where I live, we lived in a detached house. Well, it wasn't detached. It was just coming away from the rest of the street. <laughs> we used to live in one big bed. You know, we used to sleep in one big bed. The boys at one and the girls at the other. Who the, eh? Top and tail. With the army overcoat on. Army overcoat. Who had an army overcoat? They were warm and bloody blankets, weren't they? In the winter, all the kids used to pull it off each other. I used to put my feet in the pocket and hang on to the buttons. Out. <laughs> Six sisters I had, five of them were bedwetters. <laughs> I learned to swim at an early age. <laughs> when I used to go to bed, my mum used to say, Which end do you want to get in? I said, The shallow end. <laughs> I wake up in the morning, there's a rainbow in the bedroom. <laughs> the wife's mother, who knocks on the door at 12 o'clock Christmas Eve, I open the door, I say, what do you want? She said, I, wa I want to stay here for Christmas. I said, well, stay there, and I shut the door on her. <laughs> She was in an old folks home in Ashton Underline and a centre packing for causing trouble, 78 years of age. She said to her roommate, Vera, she said, I'm bored stepping in, she said. I'm going to streak through the men's ward at nine o'clock when they're having the cocoa. <laughs> He's ending now. Yeah. At nine o'clock, she stripped off and struck. And Arthur and Albert were on the edge of the bed having a cocoa. <laughs> she went whizzing past here. Who is said Arthur? Did see that? He said, I saw it. He said, whatever it was, it was ironing. I sent, I sent my 15-year-old lad to Bobby Charlton Football School of Excellence. Wouldn't have been there a month, he's losing his hair already. <laughs> Gotta be careful when you're married. I was whispering down the phone, she was here wigging. I said, who is it? He said, it's Jane. I said, Jane who? He said, Jane, don't you remember the party five weeks ago? I'm pregnant. Was well, it be a good sport? Blame someone else. <laughs> it said I'm desperate. I'm going to throw myself off the top of the flats. Was well, it? You are a good sport. <laughs> Stormy Norman, Lancashire Fusilier, going down with them deserted foxholes. True story, this. He said it's very big in here. It's big again. Get airplanes in here. Stormy Norman said, uh, in America we have canyons, 
30,000 times as big as this. You can shout down one of our canyons, you'll get nothing back for two whole minutes. He said, it's funny that. We blew the bugle in 39 and you didn't hear it for two years. <laughs> Saddam Hussein had an Irishman, Scotchman, and an Englishman, hostage. He said, sing a song with dog in it, you go free. An English fellow stood up, how much is that doggy in the window? He said, you can go, go on, shut up. And the Scotch fellow stood up, he said, when I was a lad, old chap, was a pop. Oh, he said, don't sing anymore, go away. And the Irish fellow stood up. Strangers in the night. Exchanging glances, wandering in the night. Said, Wait a minute, this song has no dog in it. He said, I've not finished yet, you shut up. Scooby Dooby Doo. <laughs> So after this wonderful galaxy of a show tonight, when you go home, I always remember it gets very delicate. You know, yeah, you're doing your best and she's talking. A woman can talk. We can't. Us men, we've got to concentrate. You're going at it like a frog on a bike pump. And she's knitting. Come on, moan. You're supposed to moan. He said, the washers broke. <laughs> Never go out, got nothing to wear. I said, wear your white dress. She said, there's a hole in the veil. <laughs> I never go out. I took it out last week. She said, where's all the trams gone? <laughs> Can we do it doggy fashion? She said, in all the years I've been married to you, you've never come out. Anything like that. <laughs> Don't know what video you've been watching while I've been in bed. <laughs> Doing all sorts of jumping off wardrobes and nothing on, only bum boots. <laughs> love me, don't you? She said, I love you very much. Well, why can't we do it doggy fashion? <laughs> and all right. All right. <laughs> in two conditions when I shall stop, you stop. And two, we do it in a street where no one knows us. <laughs> and for God's sake, don't drag me past my mother's. Hey, no photographs, please. Security reasons. Social security reasons. <laughs> uh, have you noticed I've still got the sunroof? I've got this new shampoo, it's called Shoulders. <laughs> nice to see all the lads. I, I, we, we live in Blackpool, Roy and myself, and uh, I've never tried them whelks. Have you ever tried a whelk? I bought some today on the prom, and... I was chewing it when I got in the car park here. <laughs> I took it out of my mouth, there wasn't a mark on it. <laughs> Have you tried them winkles, them little black things, and they give you a pin to eat them with? They're like bogeys with crash helmets on there. <laughs> My little boy coming this morning, six. What a stupid name for a kid. <laughs> so what do you want, six? <laughs> he said, Dad, there's a man at the door with a bald head. I said, well, tell him I've got one, you dozy little guest. <laughs> What about these ball fellas that comb it across? Have we got any in? Come on, stand up, let's have a laugh. I'm sure they get it from round their arse, under their arm, they pull it. <laughs> you can always tell them in a high wind they're walking down the road like that. <laughs> you know when you go to the toilet on a plane? Why is the window frosted? Who's going to look in? A flock of geese. 
Isn't it embarrassing using a toilet on a plane? You usually wait until there's no queue. And there's no queue and you dive in quick. But someone's been in there before you with a problem. <laughs> and you can't go. And you walk out quick and there's a big long queue. <laughs> And they all think it was you, don't they? <laughs> they all walk past your seat like that. <laughs> and on a plane, have you noticed the pilot always wants to talk? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Captain speaking. Flying Ice, 34,000 feet, and I'll speak to you later on. Thank you. <laughs> and you're sat there like that. Like, what do you say then? An hour later, he's there again. Once again, I can't speak like that, but I'm a bit nervous. That's the best time for 40, thank you. I've got off this plane, I walked into this pile, I went, hey, Pontius, come here, innit? <laughs> what were you talking about? We were a mile up in the air. He said, but I'm off my tent on the front, he said, what? I flew on the shuttle. Have you been on the shuttle from here? To London? Stupid steward has to show me how to put a life jacket on. <laughs> you fly over three canals in a lake. <laughs> Have you noticed last night I was funny in Blackpool, you know, because you get the holiday makers, they're all there for the illuminations and oh. You know when you go for your, your supper at night, you're always stood next to a drunk in the queue. Have you noticed drunks always look at your shoes? Stand next to a drunk in a queue, they always go like that. <laughs> then they step back and have another look. <laughs> and they say things like, I'm bloody telling you. What does that mean? <laughs> Have you noticed, ladies, when men get pissed, all the clothes get bigger. They stand there going, Charlie, get me one of us. <laughs> I feel sorry for you ladies. You know when you have to go and see a gynaecologist? Because he always gets you up in the stirrups. Pulls your sheet back. Walks out and leaves the door wide open. <laughs> And a fella walks past they used to go to school with. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Scouts who went for a job on a building site, the foreman said, what would you want to paint the 80-foot chimney? It's an 80-foot fucking brush. <laughs> Scouts had gone for a prostitute. She said, would you like a blowjob? He said, uh, will it affect me doll money? Can't stop us laughing, can they? I once got sacked for laughing. Man, I'm driving a fucking nurse at the time. <laughs> Little lad says to his dad, Where do babies come from, dad? He said, The stork. He said, Who fucks the stork? <laughs> Little lad says to his dad, What will we do with me toy toys, dies, dad? He said, Well, we'll get a cardboard box, some flowers, bury it in the garden, get some of your pals round, chocolates, minerals, ice cream. Just can't we fucking kill it now, Dad? <laughs> I'd love to tell that on stars on Sunday, you know. <laughs> Fellow went in this brothel, he said, uh, I've only got a tenner. She said, there's nothing here for a tenner, son, not unless you have the penguin. <laughs> he said, what's that? She said, go to room number seven. He went down. Oh, Dolly Bird, delicious, you know. He said, I've come for the penguin, I've only got a tenner. She said, uh, Come in, she stuck the tenner away. She said, uh, he said, listen, what's this fucking penguin all nonsense about? She said, you'll be quite satisfied, don't worry about that, she said. She unzips his flies, wraps his kecks around his ankles and his underpants. Walked away, the music started up. She stripped off, ooh, and he stood there, fucking stalk on, defying gravity, you know. She walked back, she got all of it like that. She went, where the sun in my home? I behold your adorable face. And he's just about to shoot, and she walked away. He 
he said, where the fucking hell are you going? <laughs> a woman went to the vicar, she said, vicar, I must tell you, she said, I lost my temper this morning. I called a man a fucking bastard this morning. My God, he said, there's no justification for that. She said, well, he put his hands on my breasts. He said, you mean like this? <laughs> she said, yes, he said, there's still no justification for that. She said, well, he gave me one. He said, you mean like this? When he gets on the job, he's banging away there. She said, yes, and he's giving me AIDS. He said, the fucking bastard. <laughs> in court, the judge says, you're charged with battering your wife to death with a hammer. And a voice in the back of the court says, you fucking shit us. <laughs> well, it all went quiet, you know. He says, you're also charged with battering your daughter to death with a hammer. And a voice in the back of the court says, you lousy bastard. The judge said, well, this can't go on. He says, come here. He said, I can understand you being a bit upset about this case, but any more outbursts like this, I shall charge you with contempt. Now, what's the idea? He said, well, I live next door to this bastard for over 20 years, he said. Every time I asked to borrow a hammer, he said, yeah, I'm fucking wrong. <laughs> so Bill and Ben's in bed, and Bill said to Ben, scobble, blah, 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 blah. And Ben said, swallow it, you mad twat. <laughs> Well, I dash in the house, says, come on, look, pack your bags, I want the pools. Come on, he says, pack your bags, I want the pools. She watch you like pack some lights, some heavy, where we going? He says, just pack them and fuck off. <laughs> Big gang of fellas running down the road. A fella said, what's up? He says, a lion escaped. Said, Which way did he go? He said, you don't think we're fucking chasing it, do you? <laughs> Jewish fellow in the synagogue praying. He says, Lord, help me, please. I don't know which way to turn, he says. I'm up to my neck in debt, he said. I owe every bastard, he said. I don't know what I'm going to do. Please, he says, Lord, let me win the sweepstake. If I can just win the sweepstake, everybody gets paid. Please, Lord, let me win the sweepstake. A week went past. Not a fucking carrot. <laughs> Nothing. He's there again next Saturday morning. He says, Lord, are you fucking listening to me? He said. <laughs> Please, I've got to win the sweepstake, Lord. Please, please let me win the sweepstake. Fucking sick of coming in, they said. Another week went past. Not a fucking light, nothing. He's there again next Saturday morning. He's on his knees now. Get a Jew on his knees, you can plot fucking sawdust. <laughs> oh, he said. Oh, you lousy bastard. <laughs> Let me win the fucking speech to the queen, he said, please. What kind of a fucking Jew are you? <laughs> and the clouds parted. <laughs> and the boy said, I'm in. Meet me halfway. Buy a fucking ticket. <laughs> Thank God we can laugh ourselves, aren't we? But it's no fun, by the way, and it's marvellous, and it's due to you lovely people for coming here and spending a few hours with us to make somebody happy, and I do appreciate it. And if you're going home tonight, for God's sake, take it easy, because the bastards, these police around here. <laughs> the last time I was at Quaffers, I got pulled up. I got pulled up, listen to this, Jack. I got pulled up in my car, because he sells cars in. <laughs> Loving bastard, that is what I'm <laughs> Anyway, I got pulled up in the car, I wound the window down, this big copper put his head in my car, he said, I've been following you for five miles. I said, the answer's still no. <laughs> Do you know it's the very, very same Johnny Hamp who rang up the sex therapist, Dr. Ruth? Do you remember her? He used to be on Channel 4. 
Do you remember the sex therapist? Johnny Hamp rang up. He said, uh, hello. She said, uh, Dr. Ruth here. He said, my name's Johnny Hamp. I'd like to speak to you about premature ejac... Oh, I'll call you back. Now... <laughs> Or the fellow walking home on Valentine's Day, he's seen some flowers in a shop window. He thought, I'll buy the wife some flowers. Walked in, young girl behind the counter. He said, excuse me. She said, yes. He said, can I have a bunch of flowers, please? She said, this is a circumcision clinic. He said, you've got flowers in the window. She said, what do you want me to put in the window? <laughs> He said, it's no skin off my nose. <laughs> you like to be up and about when you're on holidays. So after dinner, went to reception, left an early call in for next morning. Sure enough, knock on the bedroom door, little Irish porter. Good morning, sir. Was it six o'clock or seven o'clock you want to call in? <laughs> I said, actually, it was eight o'clock. <laughs> what time is it now? He said, a quarter past 11. <laughs> 43 years ago this very week when I was called up in the forces, I was called up on the same day as Danny LaRue. <laughs> I, I know what you're thinking, yes. Yes, Danny went in the ATS. But he was very lucky, his old man got him out. <laughs> now, um... My father, my father actually knew the day he was going to die. Uh, a judge told him. Which, uh, <laughs> um... There's been a mature audience tonight. I was working a disco last night, 300 kids, that's hard work. If you talk too fast, they start dancing. <laughs> yeah, here's another daft one. Fella threw a bomb in the pet shop. He said, I'll give you 10 seconds to get out. And the parrot said, doesn't give the tortoise much of a chance. <laughs> That George rope was that far up Johnny Amp's ass, he can see Stan Bowman's fucking feet. <laughs> 